Oh, God is mighty. It's a great thing to see people in the room. We've had a, a tough couple of years here for all of us in this industry, and we are going to uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel, and this panorama is going to be done. We feel it coming. I'm going to go next week and get my next booster that they say get. And if they say get another one in the fall, I'll get that. And if they say get one in January, I'll go get that one. And I'm just going to keep boosting my ass until I'm boosted right into health. <laughs> That's my plan. So, hey, uh, if you've never been here before, a special welcome to you. Uh, there's, a, there's a lobby bar, and we encourage drinking. Uh, I started about 11 this morning, so you got to work hard to catch up with me. Um, but you, I encourage you to do that. And Uber and Lyft pick you up right at our front door. And your car is so safe and undeniably beautiful downtown Duluth. You can leave it right where it is and just take that Lyft and Uber home and come on back when you get ready and get your car. And it'll be just like you left it, I promise. Uh, so you can do that. Also in the lobby, there are two restrooms. They're unisex because there's one toilet per room. Uh, we're not making a statement of any social, religious, or political enlightenment. It's just that there's one toilet per room. We, in fact, in fact, and I mean this sincerely, you, every one of y'all can go in there together if you want to. <laughs> don't care. Don't care. Don't want to know about it. So just, uh, but just know that there's one place to go in each one of those rooms. However, at the intermission, uh, between the two sets, we will actually open up the downstairs restroom. There's a men and a ladies room down there, and we encourage y'all to follow the directions on those signs and, uh, and, and go on down there and do your thing if you don't want to queue up in front of the bar and wait your turn. So that's, that's always that option. Uh, also, this is a great, appropriate time for me to say hello to you folks watching on EOP Live on YouTube. We're so happy to have y'all. You'll notice at the top of your chat box, there's a blue bar that says tip jar. And it's not going to piss Matthew off at all <laughs> if y'all just empty y'all's pockets this evening. Uh, we're going to be thanking you right now in advance for your generosity that we know you're going to show. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for those tips. They're going to roll in. You know, some, some of these shows we get about... 10 or $15 tips. In some of these shows, we've actually gotten thousands of dollars in tips. It's crazy. It's great. It's, the panorama has changed our industry so weirdly and so some, in some ways wonderfully and in some ways horribly. But uh, we're just learning to deal with it and learning to roll with the punches because you know what? My little son, when he was four years old, told his mother at the breakfast table, Mama, you got to build a bridge and get over it when she was upset. And she's done a great job at doing that. And I try to live up to that mantra every single day myself. So build that bridge and get right over it. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. Now, this young man that's going to be on stage this evening, I met him in, um, a long time ago. And I just asked him backstage, I said, when do you think that was? And he says, I think it was about 1996. Because there was a friend of ours, a mutual friend. His name was Keith Naylor. And he was one of those individuals that was just like... Uh, if you met him, he, you knew he was one of the best humans you'd ever met in your life. And, uh, and he had this, he, he had like a, about 15 children, I think, didn't he, Matthew? I mean, it was a bunch of them. He had a ton of children, his own self. But then he also had these ministries that he did with youth, and they were all revolving around music and basketball and baseball. He was an athlete. He was a great musician. And he was just a really cool dude. And his name was Keith Naylor. And, uh, and I loved Keith to death. And he passed away a bunch of years ago. But, uh, but one of the folks that he brought with him uh, to play uh, when he was playing for me was this young kid named Matthew Pearman Jones. But he didn't call himself that then. He just said it was Matthew Jones. But I like Matthew Pearman Jones. I like, the, I like the three names. That's really cool. But one of the things about Matthew, and I think I actually advised him on this or counseled him on it or told him just like, damn it. Because when Matthew first played on, on stage for me, you never saw ever anything except the top of his head. <laughs> he played like this. And he played like this. And he sang like this. And he played like this. And I was like, Matthew. You're a really good-looking young man. You've got to raise your head up 
and let people see who you are and see your eyes and see your smile because he's wonderful and he's a great crafter of song and he's a, he's a dear friend and I love him to death and I just can't believe that he's playing in this little bitty place when he should be playing big arenas because he's, he's very, very, very good. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for watching online. Put a nice big old welcome together for Matthew Pearman Jones.
That's an Emmy Lou Harris song. Did I ever tell you the story about that song? Can I just start by telling stories? So that song, well, it's just me. I don't have a, anybody else, so I don't have to worry about anything. I can talk as long as I want until you guys tell me shut up. But that song, so about 20-ish years ago, when I was five, uh, I was on tour with a band who had just finished a record with Malcolm Byrne, who, who produced Red Dirt Girl, that uh, record that that song I just played is on. And on our way to Texas, they wanted to stop through um, Louis, uh, Louisiana, where his studio was. And we got there, and we were able to go in and, and visit. And I thought I was kind of geeking out, because he was a, um, a, prodi a protege of, uh, is that right, protege? Of Daniel Lanois, who's a producer I love and an artist that I love. And so I was geeking out. And we got there, and uh, when we arrived, he said, Emmy Lou just left. We just finished mixing Red Dirt Girl. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So we're walking into this house, it's, which is beautiful and cool. And, and we go into this living room, and there's a big console board there. And he plays this record they just finished mixing. And I heard that song. I was one of the first people to hear it off the board. They had just finished mixing it, and I almost, I had to do everything in me to not fall in the middle of the room and weep like a child. It was so beautiful, and the song just struck me, like, really deeply. And so to, to wrap this up, I'm telling stories a little too early. Kind of, you know, you got to get the momentum, and then you got to tell the stories. But this is what's going on tonight. So, okay, fast forward to a few years ago. Okay, I've been covering this song for 20 years. And I was doing a show. I had to stand in for a band that couldn't fly to America for some Americana Fest thing in Nashville. And a friend uh, called me and said, hey, can you fill in for this band and come and do this thing tonight? Well, Emmy Lou was closing that night. So I'm sitting backstage, and Emmy Lou Harris shows up. And I meet Emmy Lou Harris. And, um, and I said, hey, can I tell you a story? And I told her the story of where you know we went and ended up at this house at Malcolm Burns' place. And I told her, I said, I fell in love with that song and as soon as it came out and I could learn it, I've been playing it ever since. And she goes, that's, that's funny. She goes, I, I always cover other people's song. Nobody ever co covers my songs. And I said, well, I've been doing it for 20 years. Well, here's the, here's the fun part. At the end of the night, Phil, who was kind of leading the night, who's one of his, her band leader, he said, hey, Emmy wants to come up, wants people to come up on stage and finish this last song with everybody. And it was the Pearl. And I got to stand right next to her and sing that damn song. And here's the thing. <laughs> My friend who was taking photos in the room, she said, I saw it. I saw the moment when it registered. <laughs> and your face just swolled up with, like, how do I not start crying? Uh, it was really, really wonderful. And, and who, I couldn't have planned any of that. I just happened to be there. And uh, so anyway, that's a little story about that song. What a way to start off the night. How's it going? Hey, I'm Matthew Perryman Jones. So many ways to find a lonely lover, they're the first ones to confess. Stuck between an honest day and the secrets in your your heart broke, honey, and pick what suits you best. You spend your whole life working on it, but you're such a lovely mess. Right there, you to convince me that your love's a work of art. I don't believe a 
That song is on a record I did 10 years ago this year called Land of the Living. Um, so I'm going to probably do a few of those songs on that record. And because it is just me and a guitar and you guys, and I've done this before, but it usually pisses my band members off, is just throw a song out if you have a request. I know a lot of you did that online, too, and I appreciate that. Um, but let's keep it interactive, and I'll do my best. There's no promises. I don't... I, I'm trying to remember most of my songs right now, so. Hmm. I'm going to just go with a brand new song. Brand new. Like, I haven't recorded this song. Uh, this is a song, like, so over the last couple of years, um, you know, I kind of put the guitar down, and it, and it gathered a lot of dust over the last couple of years, and, and I... And I, to be honest, I kind of enjoyed it. And um, I went and you know did a bunch of building projects in my backyard, built a deck and a fire pit thing and a privacy fence and all kinds of stuff. Why are y'all laughing? You're like, I, I can't see you doing that. I'm a very handy person. Uh, sh <laughs> Shalom had the biggest laugh there. I'll show you pictures. Let's talk afterwards. I got all kinds of stuff. I got proof. But, so I wasn't writing, and so at some point, maybe this was the end, maybe October 2021, I got an email from a friend who said, hey, would you like to be a part of a writer's group? Uh, and basically all they did is every week they would send out a, a prompt, which would be a word or a phrase or something that she came up with and just said, here's your prompt, go write a song off this prompt, and then you have to turn it in by Tuesday, the week after. So you had a week to write a song, record it even if it was on your iPhone, which is what I did, and, uh, and turn it in. And if you don't turn it in, then you are sort of unceremoniously uh, off the email list. You just don't get an email again, which I thought was kind of cool. And so I, um, I said yes, and I, I thought that would be a fun challenge just to kind of make myself right. And so I got the, um, I lasted two weeks, by the way. <laughs> I have three kids, and I was single dadding, like, you know, online school, and I was like, this was fun, but, you know, I got, I got to be tech support for my kids, so, anyway. So the first prompt was swan dive, and I thought, that's interesting, and this is what just came out. I just thought, when I thought about swan dive, I kind of had this idea of, how do you end well? 
things end, right? Careers end, uh, relationships end, whatever. Um, things come to an end at the point. And how do you do that well? That was the thought I had. And so this is what came out. And I thought in the moment, I was like, I want to try to do kind of a John Prine-esque song. Um, so I did my very best. And of course, and it actually a line in the song is, if you shoot, my dad used to say this all the time, shoot for the stars, you'll end up somewhere in the heavens, right? So try to write a John Prine song, you might get somewhere further than you were. So this is called Swan Dive. Now this is when you can't Google if I, if I fuck the words up. first line of this song. And I'm on my own. There's nobody here to help me. I started out so well chasing my high hopes Now my feet are slowly slipping on a tight rope I got further than I thought than I ever had been Well, if you shoot for the stars, you'll wind up somewhere in the heavens If I'm going down, I'll do it right I'm gonna barrel out my chest and throw my arms out wide If you don't fall, you'll never learn to fly so I'm taking a swan dive Well there always comes a time When your time's up And you tasted the last drop In your wine cup Every good thing has got its ending And then you stumble through the dark To find a new beginning And if I'm going down chest and throw my arms out wide. If you don't fall, you'll never learn to fly. So I'm taking a swan dive. My head is toward the ground. My feet are in the clouds. It's not a step of faith. If you're not full of doubts, let's go. What you think? Is that recordable? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. We're just going to keep on going, making it up as I go. And you guys throw it out there. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Look me in the eyes, tell me you don't feel a thing 
Well, look me in the eyes Tell me you don't feel a thing Well, I'm laying out my heart And I'm giving you everything And if it all goes wrong Are you just gonna walk away? And if it all goes wrong, are you just gonna walk away? Well, get it out now and say what you need to say Wrestling tigers in there, is that right? Okay. You got it. Well, I'm wrestling tigers. I can't be. will be the last time he said he didn't mind this will be the last time now I'm under the gun I'm in a cage walking a wire I'm drunk in a desert I'm out of my mind I'm light as a feather I left my heavy heart behind But the feeling is fading This chemical daydream I guess I just want everything And nothing can change me Now I'm under the gun I'm in a cage Walking a wire I just did it for fun Lost in the game And I'm 
Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for, you know, spending your Friday night here. So easy to, uh, you know, I, I, I am, I, you know, I, it's been a while since I've been out um, on a tour. Uh, it's been over three years at this point, and uh, and it's been longer than that since I've been just me and a guitar. Um, and so, you know, you go out, you leave your house, you leave your kids, you leave your dog, and. Uh, you hope people still want to listen. And, and I'm so thankful that you're here and you do. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So this is your night. I'm here for you. And again, let's make it interactive. If you got stuff. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. It's probably been a long time since I've done this one. I wrote this song years ago with a guy, Todd B. Wells. Um, actually, he's a buddy of mine from here. I, I knew before I moved to Nashville. And, um, and he had this cool little idea he brought to me. He's a very quiet dude. And he's like, hey, what do you think about this? And I was like, man, that's really cool. And um, we sat and worked this song out, and um, I dig it, I still dig it, but it's been a while since I've sang it, so I um, sung it, sang it, everything's gone in the last two years, my grammar, um, here we go, this is Refuge. Tired of fighting, throwing. 
punches in the dark Where mystery seduction I'm supplying for the I can. Is anybody a chiropractor in here? Yeah, seriously? Is my standing really f fucked up a little bit? <laughs> Messed up, I'm sorry. I just realized there's some kids here too. I feel like a, maybe let's talk after the show. I feel like I've got a, got a weird angle thing happening. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. I wanna rock and roll I wanna give my soul I'm wanting to believe I'm not too old Don't wanna make it up Don't wanna let you down
gotta swing the bat Too many years of dying Why is that? somebody downstairs listening, maybe by the name of Eddie, um, or somebody who knows what a story is, um, I would love a story. I'll be, well, I'll be right back. Oh, right there. I love that you're sitting right there. Uh, don't get up. No, no, no. Okay. I love it. Eddie Owens. My Lord, it ha it ha I don't know, it's kind of funny. I am, I, I'm originally from Philadelphia, but I grew up most of my life in the South. But it's funny when I play, sometimes there are certain things that trigger some Southerner in me that I don't know where it comes from. Have you all picked that up? Have you all picked that up? Because I used to say, use guys and water. From Delphi. That's more, uh, that's more Western PA. Yuns, that's Pittsburgh. Um, I said use, guy, use guys, use guys. And then when I moved, when I moved to the Atlanta area um, from Levittown, PA, I said water and people said, how, how do you spell that? I was like, W-A-T-E-R. And they're like, that's water. <laughs> Well, I call it water. Um, I'm going to play you another new song. Um, actually, this is not a new song. This is just a song that I don't sing normally, um, but I wrote it. Um, there's, a, there's a duo called the Secret Sisters, and they're, yeah, they're fantastic. They're so great. And um, years ago, I ha they, um, for some reason, asked me to write with them, and I did. And when we sat down to write, they had this idea. They had a certain idea of like this prodigal, prodigal son story. And, um, and so we, we went into it. And I, I kind of love the idea of this. this um, and I, I'm kind of a sucker for the sad stuff. And, um, uh, and I loved writing this song. I loved the idea of what was, what was going on in the head of this person while he was away after he'd left. Y'all familiar with that story in the Bible? Um, and they wanted to change the words at the end um, to say a certain thing that they ended up recording and they did this record with Brandy Carlisle. They did that record. Um, I believe it's called, um, what is the record called? That's terrible. It's got their grandmother on the cover. It's, um, what is it? No, 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 the Secret Sister record, not the Brandy Carlisle record. Um, what, where am I going? Come back. Oh, they changed the word, thank you. That's, thank you. Uh, they changed the words, to the, the, the tagline of the song, and I, I remember when we talked about it, I was like, I don't, I'm not loving that because I like the, I don't wanna resolve it. Um, and they went and they played it and they said, they told me, they're like, now Brandy said she thought we, they heard us singing this and she really liked that lyric, so they kept it. Which I think they just kind of blamed it on how you're gonna argue with Brandy Carlisle, but um, I would have if I were in the room. But uh, so they did it and they cut it and it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful song and the way that they kind of, uh, the, the kind of the angle they took is kind of a dedicated to their father and it's a really sweet song. Um, but I don't write sweet songs. 
Um, I write sad songs that don't resolve. Um, and so I, this is my version of the song, I guess is what I'm saying. Cheers. Are you guys? Okay, we've got beverages. Okay, cheers. It's water, yeah. Really strong water. So this is called Carry Me. And I'll, uh, I'll see if you can, well, see if you can figure out what the, the line is that I, I kept. I'm a long way from home I feel it deep in my bones I'm tired like a sinner I'm cold and my money's all gone I'm ashamed of the things that I've done Feeling love like facing a gun The closer you get The farther that I'm gonna run If I keep on hiding How will I be known I keep telling myself That I'm So their line was, when my father will carry me home, which is very sweet. And they dedicated it to their dad, and it's beautiful. But I like the other one better. I felt that one when I said, when I fall, who will carry me home? It's kind of the thought. It's the thought that catches you. It's the thought that's like, here I am all by myself. I've done all this stuff, but I'm totally by myself. And I don't know. I just like that idea. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to do my best. It's been a minute since I've done this. Ha, <laughs> ha. One 
Once we found the road to take us there But we spent too much time waiting by the window And we ended up not going anywhere Always thought you'd be the kind That you always thought I'd be the one to run Yeah, but you can't get a stain out of the ceiling When you don't know where the water's coming from There's a Thanks for hanging with me on that. Okay. Okay. This is a song about love and gambling, and that is what we are doing tonight. I am gambling. Get your uh, Google ready for lyrics. 
I don't want to blame everything on COVID. But why not? I will say it's been different. It's been the memories have been... The recall is a little less sharp. Come on over now You can stay a while We'll roll like dice See how this plays out Let's go for broke this time Let's lay it all right on track with each other. Before I play this song, I want to point out that on the merch table there is a uh, there's a print of a of a piece of art uh, that I would love for you to check out. It's um, a, f- a friend of mine actually. He's a brilliant artist. He actually did the artwork for my records, Land of Living, and Swallow the Sea. He's a brilliant mixed media artist, uh, this guy named Wayne Brzezinka. And I've I've never known an artist to put so much thought and care into his work. Um, He's got so much stuff. Please find him online on uh, Instagram, Wayne Brzezinka. Um, And so out there, there's a piece he did inspired by this song, um, and he did a portrait of Van Gogh. And it's called The Other Ear. 
and it's it's uh, it's bleeding water, which is you know maybe a little creepy, but um, but a beautiful poetic thought of just um, kind of wh wh where he went with. It's really beautiful, and it's out there um, if you want to get it. It's such a just a beautiful piece of artwork um, for your house. Um, and so this is the song that uh, that piece of art was inspired by. This is called Ophio. Under the silence of water Into a sky full of birds Out from the land of our fathers I am falling on your words mm. Dark as the night of a preacher I made a bed out of hay they paid me a handful of money, but I gave it all away, all away. And the righteous raised their stones, and the devil threw his arrows. I was longing for a home with no Did you, did you say that online, probably? Okay, good. Okay. I said I'm sorry. I'm like, no. Okay. <laughs> now you're sorry for that, and you're going for another one. Um, I don't... Okay. Um, oh, thank you. Um, I, I may not try that one. I've, I've, I've bombed a couple so far, and I'm pretty sure that would be a pretty big one. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. 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 I've I've heard your requests and one shall be granted. Um, well it's 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 gonna be the one that I can remember the best. Um, I mean, this one's been a long time, but I mean, I'll get there, I'll get there, I'll get there. A song I co-wrote? I mean, I'll, which one? Oh, actually, I didn't co-write that song. I, no, I just, I was just a, a guest vocal on that. It does? Well, where's my money at? I want my money. Uh, it is such a beautiful song. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it is such a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song um, by Lucy Wainwright Roach. Um, and yeah, such a great singer, songwriter. And this song I had the complete honor of being a guest vocal on. Um, and it was, it's so beautiful. And it's a, it's a beautiful song about um, she would say conscious uncoupling, how to, how to, 
get out of get out of a relationship that is kind of ended, but in a way that is loving and conscious and um, yeah, loving. And it's such a beautiful song. And the, and the reason why they asked me is is she asked um, Jordan, who was producing the, the record. She goes. I need a sad voice. <laughs> and she's like, I have just the person for you. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. But you thought that before you got to the song? So weird. That's so funny. You have a good Spidey sense about you. That's really impressive. I just realized the live streaming folks probably have zero clue. They only know what I'm saying. So they're just seeing me stare at the, at the I'm so sorry. Like we're having a really wonderful conversation down here. Um, uh, it is a beautiful song. So we encourage you to go listen to Quit With Me by Lucy Wainwright Roche. Um, it's a beautiful song, um, but I can't sing it tonight. I don't, I don't know it. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, feels Like Letting Go, I think. <clears throat> I will do my best. Um,
guys are good. Oh, what's the Leota request? Hi, Leotas. Oh my gosh, who's here? Just James. I've known Jim or Leota since he was like a, a, a little pup, so that's crazy. Please stay here after the show so I can say hi to you. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, okay. I mean, I gotta do a song James Leota wants me to do. This whole night is just a night of just jumping off the ledge. But y'all are going with me, so that's good. Put your defense down. Open up your heart and lay all of it out. I know how hard it sounds, but loneliness will have its way when feeding your doubts. I'm waiting on the light. I'm chasing out the lies, chasing out the lies that keep you caged. I'm waiting, waiting on the light to change. No matter what's inside, there is nothing you can say to cause me to hide You know I'm broken too I've fallen far, lost my faith and found a made new I'm waiting on the light, waiting on the light to change I'm chasing out the lies, chasing out the lies that keep you caged. I'm waiting, waiting on the light to change. Our love won't let you go. It bends and reaches low. Just let go I'm waiting on the light Waiting on the light to change I'm chasing out the Lies chasing out the lies that keep you caged. I'm waiting, waiting on the light to change. I'm going to do just a couple more, two or three more songs. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight and taking this ride with me of just kind of stepping out and playing songs that I haven't played in a long time. I mean, I played them yesterday, but I've already forgotten half of them. But thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. It's never lost on me that you guys spend this time with me and, and spend your money. Thank you so much. I'm gonna do another brand new song. This is the second song I did um, for that writer's um, group. Um, this was the second one I did. Um, so I played you the first one, Swan Dive, and then the second, um, the second prompt was uh, Ancient Injury, um, which was right up my alley. And uh, 
I gotta tune my guitar kind of weird for this. Um, Um, and so, <clears throat> I, um, the first uh, image that came to my mind when uh, the prompt was sent was this, um, like an archaeological dig, you know, ancient injury, right? It's kind of, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was, I was hearing people clear their own throats for me, <laughs> like empathy, empathy, throat clearing. And so I kind of went with this, this picture of, of this archaeological dig and um, kind of chased <clears throat> this idea that came up as I was, as I was pursuing it. Um, it kind of unfolded, one of these kind of things, it just kind of unfolded as I, as I wrote it. And um, there's an old uh, Gnostic text that I kind of based some of the idea out of. Um, and the, and the, 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 the text says... Um, and I hope I'm, I'm quoting it right. It says, um, uh, that which you, that, <laughs> that which, um, if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. Um, and I thought this is, uh, and it's, it goes into all kinds of stuff. I'm kind of a Jungian nerd, uh, sort of armchair student of, sort of. I'm fascinated with the unconscious, and so if you're fascinated with the unconscious, uh, Carl Jung is the one to hang out with. Um, and sort of the idea is kind of digging into that. So that's where I went with it, and it's called Belly of the Beast. Thank you. They went digging underground in a foreign land And dusting off the cash with a careful hand And finally making sense of things that we never knew to understand And buried in the ages lost in a history out of sight and out of mind As legend grew like gossip The truth would be what no one dared to find and Truth is often hidden underneath Like a prophet in some time and a little bravery I'm sitting on a couch in therapy I'm still talking about fucked up family and terrified to take a look inside afraid what I might see but I'm so tired of pretending I'm okay building playgrounds over graveyards for display is there freedom when we take off the disguise and just look it in the face and truth is often hidden. 
hidden underneath Like a prophet in the belly of the beast And like anything that's worth it takes some time Profit in the belly of the beast And like anything that's worth it takes some time And a little bravery And like anything that's worth it takes some time Sorry for I gotta get it in tune, right? So <laughs> please, dear God. Oh yeah. I do as a matter of fact. Thank you. Well, like George, uh well, there's a story of uh Chet Atkins who's playing a guitar somewhere, and the guy next to him goes, man, that guitar sounds real good. And he took it off and he leaned it against the wall and says, how's it sound now? <laughs> Give it a minute. Because it must have been the very much older version of Chet Atkins. Oh, probably, a little grumpy. Yeah. Could you, can you guys hear Shalom talking to me? Okay, good. Because I was like, that could be weird if I'm talking to, some, to God from the stage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do maybe one or two more. Or four. I mean, I'm here for you guys. Or five. No, probably not five. Probably not five. My voice is, is, is protesting the five. I might need another story. I can tell ton. Listen, I can tell stories. So this, so the guitar. The um, oh, let's let's talk after the show. Um, so this guitar. So this is actually kind of a cool story. Uh, uh, so, yeah, um, it ended up being a cool story. Um, I was with my. Uh, this would have been ten years ago because my now fourteen-year-old was four, and I took her. Um, guitar shopping with me. I went to go look for guitars. And I, on kind of a whim, I decided I was going to go to Guitar Center and look in their used guitar section. And if you're a guitar player, you might kind of, if you're a snotty guitar player, you might kind of, you know, snarl at that. But I got a story to tell you about that, too. Just wait. It gets better. So I'm, I'm back there. And there's actually some really great guitars. And I'm looking, and I'm, and, and, there's a couple good ones, and I um, saw this one first, and I loved it, and I played it, and I was like, ah. Oh. And you know, when you play guitar, it's like, okay, that's the guitar. <clears throat> but I brought my, my daughter with me, and I wanted her to be a part of it. So I, I would play something, and she's really good. She's got great taste, and it's still, it holds strong to this day. Like, I take her shopping with me. I'm like, is this okay? I mean, right now, she'd probably be freaking out. Like, I don't know. Like, there's too many buttons. or so. She'd say something. Um, and so uh, she's with me, and I play this one, and I love it, and I kind of go, this is the one. And then I play this Martin D18, I think it was. And it also sounded great. 
And my daughter looked at me, and she's like, that's the one. And I was like, Ugh, it's good. Okay. <laughs> it's the one. I mean, I mean, like, you know, I don't, you know, she heard it. And it was a great guitar. And I bought it. And I was like, okay, this is the one. And I wanted her to feel like she was a part of that process. And, and it was a good guitar. So I was like, I'm getting it. I bought the guitar. Months later, <clears throat> it gets stolen out of my van. I had gone on a little uh, short like, uh, tour. And I came home, and I was too tired. It was like one of those nights where I'm like, it's, it's in my driveway. It's, it's in a minivan. It's like, I'm just going to leave the guitars in there. I left them in. Both my guitars were stolen, my electric guitar and my acoustic. Next morning, window was busted, all this kind of stuff. Anyway, OK, that's a huge bummer. <clears throat> Side story about insurance companies. Anybody an insurance person here? <laughs> Don't take any offense, but I called the insurance company. I reported it. I had all the stuff, all the serial numbers, all blah, blah, blah. And they said, okay, we can give you X amount of money. And I was like, okay, great. Uh, and then they said, well, th oh, one last question. Do you do this as a hobby or as a living? And I'm like in the conversation. I was like, oh, I do this as a living. They're like, oh, so sorry. And I was like, no. And they're like, well, you do it. You need to have a business, your business insurance. I was like, what? And so I talked to my friend Joe. Sorry, this, is, this story is too long. Eddie's like, come on, dude. We're on live stream. Um, I, I was talking to my friend Joe, who's like this old classic like, salesman guy from New Jersey. And I was telling him the story. He's like, Matt, when an insurance company person asks you a question, you ask them a question. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, if they ask you, is this your business or your hobby, go, well, why does it matter? Because <laughs> if, if it's your business, we can't info. Oh, well, yeah, I just play with Joey down the street. Yeah. All right. So lesson learned. All right, so here's how the story comes about my guild. You guys are like, come on. So I get it stolen. I go back to Guitar Center. This is months later. And I walk in, and this thing is sitting there. Months later. And not only was it still sitting there, it was marked down to the lowest price they could put it. <laughs> so I, I was like, no way that this is still here. And it was. And I immediately I, I grabbed it, and I, I bought this guitar. So th this somehow was still meant for me. OK, so fi final story. I had the privilege. To, so this pickup that's right here, this is an LR Bags pickup um, by Lloyd Bags, who is a brilliant um, person. And I had the pleasure to meet him and, and become kind of buds with him. And when I got this guitar, I brought it to his studio he had in Nashville at the time. And he was going to put on this M80 um, on it for me, <clears throat> which was incredibly nice. And I'm sitting there with him. And I, he, I pull out this guild. And he said, man, that's a beautiful guitar. Where'd you get it? And I was like. <laughs> Uh, I'm, this is Lloyd Bags, right? And I'm like, ah, Guitar Center used? And he's like, oh, his eyes lit up. He's like, you see that 68 Gibson over there? Use Guitar Center. You see that blah, 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 blah? Use Guitar Center. I'm like, no way. He's like, yes, nobody goes to used Guitar Center to look for guitars, and there's some great guitars. So I, I was affirmed, and I had my guild, and I have an M80 from Lloyd Bags in my guitar. So FYI, if you're a guitar player, Get one of these guys. They're great. Um, OK, that was not a sales pitch, but what are we doing? Am I playing songs? Is this All right, I'm going to do one more of mine, and then I've got a, a one I'm going to sing. Um, any last requests? Okay. <clears throat> I will say I would, Land of the Living is, I would do it, um, but I'm, and I'm not trying to make an excuse, but just my voice is, <clears throat> there's no way I'm going to sing that song and do it any justice. Um, but thank you for asking for that. Um, um, just FYI, I'm going to put a show together. You guys can, it's not far, Nashville, keep your ears open. I'm going to do a 10 year anniversary show in town, probably July or August. So please, um, Stay tuned. Um, go on the Instagram. That's usually where I post stuff and all that information. Um, yes, come. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, of course. That's why I'm saying it. Come on out. Take a trip. I'll do that in a sec. Um, can't get it right. Oh, Virginia. Okay. Calculating. Calculating. <laughs> there is no way I would sing Living in the Shadows. All right. Can, can I tell you a funny story about that? Too many stories. I'm just talking. I'm not singing songs. I've sung a lot of songs, actually. Um, okay. Living in the Shadows is, is... Can I tell another story? Okay. Eddie, is it okay? Hey, I'm drinking. Okay, great. <laughs> Living in the Shadows. It's my number one uh, streamed, played song on Spotify. And it's a song. I'm going to just tell you the honest story behind this song. You ready? So on the side, so that I can feed my kids <clears throat> and, you know, all that stuff, I will write songs for movie trailers or TV. And this was one that I wrote for a, particularly for a show called Quantico. Um, and they needed a, a commercial, like a trailer for four months. And we got it, which was awesome. And it, it was wonderful. Um, but it's not the song that I would normally play. It's, it's not like MPJ, um, you know, belly button lint, you know, navel gazing stuff. Um, <clears throat> and we got it, which was great. And, it, and it, uh, it, it didn't do anything. And then all of a sudden, it stayed on online, it stayed on Spotify, and I didn't want it on Spotify because it was so unlike my other stuff. But we never took it off. And then a year ago, I get texts from friends saying, hey, I just heard you on the end of this show. Um, uh, Love, Death, and Robots. I've never heard of it. And I was like, I don't think I ever cleared a song for this, uh, for this show. I had to go back in my emails and find out I, I did clear it months ago. Um, I forgot about it. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. It turns out, I go and I watch this, and people are like, this, is, this show is amazing. And I watch the show, and I'm watching it. I'm like, there's something slightly weird about the show, and I don't know what it is. But there's something slightly off. And I didn't know what it was at the time. And then my song comes on. And it's over a straight up sex scene like it was it was it was full on sex scene and i mean not you know <laughs> so <clears throat> i'm thinking that i've never had a song over a sex scene and i'm watching this whole thing there's no dialogue it's just sex and my song and all of a sudden the next day after this song millions of people were playing the song like doing videos doing youtube clips the streams were crazy, and I was like, what the hell is going on? And so I, then I researched the show, and it's CGI. I didn't know it. It's a CGI sex scene, and it got all this attention because it's a CGI sex scene that was really real, and my song was over it. <clears throat> then all of a sudden, it's my number one most played song on Spotify. <laughs> which I would never sing in public. Um, I don't, it's not like a bad song, it's just not my jam. But so sorry, I can't sing it. There's your long story. I'm gonna close it out with this last song because <laughs> I've wasted so much time talking. Um, oh my gosh. Have you guys had an okay night? Okay, good. I've had fun, and, and I, I, love, I love Eddie, I love Shalom, I love all the people, Molly, all the folks that work here are always so great. And I will say this, because I will always say it about Eddie, um, it should always be said, and I know many other artists say this and think this, and I've, we've talked about it, <clears throat> and I might get a little choky, I'm not gonna do that. I've known Eddie for 25 years, probably. He gave me my first gig, uh, to play in front of people. I was just this little, as he described, this little, you know, hair in my face, didn't want to look at anybody. Um, <clears throat> wasn't sure of my songs, all that kind of stuff. And he gave me a stage and a platform and kept having me back. And he kept having me back for different writer's nights and all the things that he was doing. It was just incredibly generous. I worked for Eddie for a while at the door. I was probably terrible. Um, 
And he kept having me back, and I kept coming back. And then I moved to Nashville, and I kept coming back. And I will say this. Um, it is, as a guy who's toured around the United States, even parts of the world, it is unique to have a human being who cares about artists as much as Eddie does. And not only that, it, he understands the fact that it's not just the artists doing this here, it's the people working the door, the people doing anything here. Each part is a significant aspect of the whole evening. It's not just an artist up here doing this, it's every, every person. That makes it that makes it a good night for you. So hats off to Eddie Owen right over there, drinking his story. Um, uh, it, 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 truly, uh, I would. Uh, he's a and he doesn't. He's. A, I'm one of many. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna get the real talk too from Eddie. Eddie, thank you. And thank you for who you are as a human being. Um, um, that's all I'm going to say. Um, OK, so I'm going to play one more song. <clears throat> this is it. And my voice is out. And I'm going to unplug my guitar. And I'm going to come to the front of the stage. And we're going to close it out proper. Thank you all so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much.
Have a wonderful night. Come hang out. Thank you so much.